to optimize something is to make the best of a situation with imposed limitations usually it is between two or more variables that share some relationship a rectangle might have a perimeter equal to p equals 2l plus 2w and an area equal to l times w where l is length and w is width find the area keeping the perimeter constant now in ordinary optimization questions you're never asked a question in that straightforward a manner usually it's in the form of a story problem such as a person buys a hundred meters of fence what is the largest amount of land to be fenced in with that much fence notice these are the same kind of question Another question would be, what is the largest cylinder with both ends closed that can be constructed out of construction paper one meter squared? Or another kind of question would be that a Norman window, uh, as shown in the illustration, is to be constructed from 10 meters of trim around the edges. What is the largest Norman window that can be made with that much trim? Notice that in this case, you now have uh, a shape and another shape put together. You, know, you can roughly approximate that the, top ha that the top part of the Norman window is a semicircle and the bottom part of the Norman window is a rectangle. So here we have a situation where two numbers add up to 25. The sum of these two numbers is 15. Find these two numbers. Now if you work these out, I'm sure you can work the, this out with grade 10 math. This is really not an optimization problem per se, but you're just trying to find the exact value of two numbers and notice that they share a relationship in two ways. That makes it possible for you to construct two equations, um, each containing A and B. Because you have two equations and two unknowns, it's still possible to solve. Um, whereas if it was one equation and one unknown, of course, it would be impossible to solve. But the fact that you have two equations means you can solve for one in terms of the other and then substitute into the second equation, which is what I'm doing here. I'm saying that a equals 25 minus b. And so I just distribute that into the area formula a times b. And then I notice I have a quadratic to solve. So now I work out that quadratic. And uh, we divide the whole thing by 2a. Um, and um, now we fill in uh, the quadratic formula for the respective a, b's, and c's. b, remember, is uh, 1, b, uh, sorry, a is 1, b is negative 25, and c is negative 15 in this formula. And so we get a lot of positive numbers. We get positive 25, uh, positive 625, and positive 60 all go under the square root, um, with 25 going outside. And we're dividing by 2. And uh, let's just whip out the calculator and uh, do this. Uh, notice I can just do the addition. And don't forget when you use a calculator for this, you use brackets under the square root because you're adding two terms. Um, and I got 25.59 approximately. And of course, I got to now try out uh, the subtraction. What happens when you do 25 minus root 625 plus 60. Well, I can uh, zip back to my previous calculation on this calculator and move the cursor back so I can just um, turn the minus into a plus, divide by 2 again, and I get negative 0 0.59. Those are my two answers. There were no restrictions placed on these. There was nothing saying that um, the numbers had to be one thing or another. They're allowed to be positive, they're allowed to be negative. It really depends on the question. Well, in this question, we were just talking about two numbers. But now, let's take a look at this kind of a question. How about if we almost ask the same question, the two numbers add to 25, but the same two numbers multiply to a maximum. 
multiply to a maximum, in other words, they get as high as possible, very likely that both of those numbers have to be positive. If they add to 25 and they go to a maximum, we're probably thinking these are both going to be positive. Um, so let's find these two numbers. And uh, okay, so let's set it up. A plus B is 25 as required by the question and AB is some unknown X. We, can, we now have two equations and two unknowns, and one of them we can easily solve for one in terms of the other, and then rewrite AB with our new formula for B. Now everything is in one variable. The X was our unknown. We can maybe call that F of A. So we can now set up F of A as being equal to a times 25 minus a, or if you like, 25a minus a squared, using the distributive property. And when we take its derivative, it be, by the power rule, it becomes 25 minus 2a. That's f prime a. Well, if uh, we're going to think about the maximum, f of a, f prime of a is going to be zero. So, uh, that means that 25 minus 2a must equal 0. And by extension, 2a equals 25. And if you divide both sides by 2, a is 12.5. And now let's solve for b. B is 25 minus A as required by the formula. And then when you take, basically what you're doing is 25 minus 12.5, which ends up that B is also 12.5. This is quite common when we come across a situation where um, we want to maximize two variables that quite often they're equal. 